The medieval era is depicted in the film as it occurs in England. The stunning daughter of the king, Lady Mirian, is first introduced to us at the beginning of the film. She is singing sweetly while inside the royal restroom. Broomhide, her maid, comes up to her at that same moment and tells her to get dressed. Lady Mirian is seen wearing a chastity lock when she emerges from the bathtub. It comes out that the lock was a precautionary measure taken by her father, the king, to keep her safe from malicious people. Mirian has been frantically looking for the man who can open her lock, but the key has long since been lost. A group of males are seen dancing to hip-hop music in the following scene. In a song, one of the dancers describes how Prince John and his sheriff have gained control of England and are taxing the populace unfairly and heavily. The movie's protagonist, Robin Hood, is first introduced elsewhere in Jerusalem's Khalil prison. He is being escorted to the most notorious cell in the prison after being arrested for participating in the Crusades. One of the guards there questions him and Robin declines to say who ordered him there. The guard then uses a tongue loosener to punish him as a result. Robin does not change, though. The weary guard shackles Robin to sneeze while announcing that he will return for more questioning. Following his departure, the two inmates make introductions and quickly become friends. A sneeze is detained for no other reason than jaywalking, whereas Robin is incarcerated for a major offense. They quickly devise a strategy to free themselves from their chains and strike the metal bar. Fortunately, the bar cracks, allowing them to escape. The pair then releases everyone in the cell, and they all jointly make their way out of the ventilation system. The following scene has Robin thanking Asnes for assisting him in escaping while they are both on the beach. He offers to aid him in whatever way he can as a symbol of friendship. When Asnes hears this, he pulls a photo of his kid Achu out of his pocket. After that, he gives him a picture of Robin and asks him to watch over his son, who is currently in England. Sneeze responds that Achu is an exchange student when Robin, who is perplexed, inquires as to how Achu ended up in England. Being a man of his word, Robin makes a commitment to take care of Achu before leaving the area. However, he swims from Jerusalem to England as opposed to taking a boat like a regular person would. He arrives, mounts his horse, and rides out in the direction of his home. Unexpectedly, he witnesses some troops abusing an African youngster as he travels. Given that there are no other Africans in the vicinity, Robin immediately determines that it is Achu. In his haste to save the boy, he fights all the troops by himself using his superb combat abilities. The two then mount the horse and ride over to Robin's house, Loxley Hall. Sadly, when they arrive, they discover a man, towing the house away. Robin confronts the man and demands to know what is going on, furious. The man just delivers him a parchment, which Robin reads to learn that Prince John has taken possession of his home because he didn't pay his taxes on time. Robin makes every effort to convince the man that he couldn't pay the taxes since he was imprisoned in Jerusalem, but he is ignored and the man takes the house. Robin notices his blind servant, Blinken, as he saunters around the area forlorn. The two are delighted to finally meet after a long time, but Robin soon becomes upset upon learning that his father has passed away. Even worse, according to Blinken, while he was abroad, his mother, brothers, dog, cat, and goldfish perished. Blinken pulls out a pendant as the two continue their conversation, telling Robin that it was his father's final present to him. Blinken responds that it contains the secret to the greatest treasure in all of the land when Robin inquires what is within. Robin eventually introduces Achu and Blinken to one another. A youngster runs at them from the woods as the group is conversing. The youngster responds that the sheriff of Rottingham is pursuing him after Robin, being the nice man that he is, inquires as to what is wrong. The sheriff quickly shows up along with his soldiers and demands the boy be returned, but Robin is unwilling to give him up. The two fight as a result, and at the conclusion of the altercation, Robin degrades the sheriff in front of everyone. He promises to exact revenge on Prince John before sending the gang on their way. Later, Prince John is introduced to the sheriff of Rottingham, who informs him that Robin is pursuing them. In this passage, we learn that Prince John is in charge of the realm because his brother, the king, has left to participate in the Crusades. He is taxing people heavily for his advantage, as opposed to ruling justly and humanely like his brother. John is understandably alarmed by the news and immediately begins to think of solutions. When he can't solve the problem, he goes to the dungeons to consult his witch, Latrine. John tells his witch everything and asks for advice on how to stop Robin. Latrine agrees to help, but in exchange she asks John to help her get together with the sheriff, her crush. The prince concurs despite being certain that the sheriff will never approach the witch. In another location, little John the giant stops Robin and his group on a bridge as they are making their way 
to the castle. Little John insists that they must pay the toll levy before Robin will allow them to pass. Robin declines, and the two engage in a stick battle. Despite his modest stature, Robin manages to overpower the behemoth and pushes him into the dwindling river nearby. Unexpectedly, Little John begins drowning in the puddle despite not knowing how to swim. Robin is initially surprised, but when Little John keeps stumbling, he helps him up. By doing this, he gains the giant's confidence and integrates him into the group. Little John calls his best friend Will, who also happens to be an expert with daggers before he leaves. His crazy dagger techniques allow him to cut through anything while it is in the air. Following the introductions, the five individuals set off towards Prince John's castle. Prince John and the sheriff are partying inside the castle at the same time. Lady Mirian, John's niece, soon joins the group and takes in the festivities. The sheriff, who is enamored with Mirian's attractiveness, begins to flirt with her right once, but she ignores him. Robin suddenly bursts inside, slinging a dead hog over his shoulder, and places it on the throne table. The incursion infuriates John and the sheriff, but Lady Mirian, unexpectedly, unexpectedly, is impressed. Then Robin kisses Mirian on the hand and introduces himself. The sheriff is incensed by this and challenges Robin to a duel. The prince must summon his guards after Robin and the sheriff predictably sweep the board. Despite fighting bravely for a while, Robin is eventually outnumbered. At the moment when all hope appears lost, Robin's gang bursts through the entrance and begins fighting the security personnel. They quickly defeat all the evil guys, stunning everyone present, including Lady Mirian, in the process. Before departing, Robin threatens Prince John to lower taxes or else he will have him removed from office again. The next scene finds Little John rallying some men to the cause, but Robin's dry speech falls flat with them. Instead, he induces slumber in them. Observing this, Achu stands up, dons his glasses, and gives a speech that, despite being only three sentences long, is motivational. The audience becomes enraged and decides to join Robin in his fight against the oppressive ruler of England. The men begin training the following morning after dressing like Robin Hood. The men are so inept that they cannot even defeat some dummies, but Robin and Will are in charge of the training. The sheriff hires Don Giovanni, a member of the Italian Mafia, to kill Robin in the castle in the meantime. Giovanni is traveling with two of his friends. Filthy Luca, a multiple gold medalist in archery, and Dirty Ezio, a mute assassin. The two decide after some discussion that they will entice Robin by holding an archery contest in the palace, in which Filthy Luca will triumph. Dirty Ezio will covertly assassinate Robin when the audience turns on him and brands him a loser. Everyone is enthusiastic about the concept, and even unclean Ezio, who is mute, begins to giggle. Lady Mirian is surprisingly able to hear the entire dialogue from her balcony. She wakes up Broomhide, her maid, right away out of worry and informs her of the circumstance. After some discussion, the two decide to sneak out of the castle and alert Robin to the danger. When it's Broomhide's turn, her horse just moves away, leading her to fall to the ground. In contrast, Mirian calls her horse, hops onto it, and lands securely. They eventually arrive at Robin's camp, where Mirian discloses the sheriff's cunning plan to them. When Mirian says that the palace will host an archery competition, Robin starts to doubt his initial commitment to staying out of trouble. If there is an archery competition at a festival, he must go even if it puts his life in jeopardy. After that, Robin performs for his men and begins operatic singing from behind a curtain. The boys on the opposite side of the curtain believe he has taken something else out when he pulls out his sword. He takes Mirian to a quiet location after the concert to confess his love to her. But when they begin to make out, he notices that she is restrained by a chastity belt. The gadget was placed on Mirian, she then says, by her overly cautious father so that she could not have any fun before getting married. When Robin overhears this, he tries to kiss her, but Broomhide prevents them by saying that it is growing late. The two then mount their horses and ride off, but not before promising to run into Robin again. The annual archery competition is about to start when the next scene takes place at the palace. Many expert archers have traveled from all across the country to claim the grand prize. Naturally, Robin's men are also present, but they are camouflaged as females. Robin, on the other hand, dressed like an elderly man. The contest will soon start, and only two men will be able to strike the target. The two men are none other than Robin and Filthy Luca. The sheriff recognizes him right away as being Robin in disguise. While hiding in a nearby tower, Dirty Ezio is waiting to shoot at Robin. Filthy Luca and Robin are instructed to rematch since their first
first encounter resulted in a stalemate. Robin takes the first shot and succeeds once more. He then takes off his mask, much to Mirian's joy, and shows himself to be Robin. When filthy Luca finally gets the chance, he aims well and hits a double bullseye by piercing through Robin's arrow. As a result, the crowd becomes animated and starts to applaud filthy Luca. They mock Robin and call him a loser at the same time. Since Robin is never supposed to lose an archery competition, he is shocked. So, he pulls out the movie screenplay to make sure everything is in order. Fortunately, he discovers that he still has one shot. Additionally, Prince John and the Sheriff confirm the storyline and verify their scripts. Without waiting, Robin draws his arrow. However, filthy Luca pushes him just as he is about to shoot, causing Robin to shoot his arrow upward. Unexpectedly, the arrow shoots past the entire crowd and falls on the target, giving him the victory. This demonstrates that screenwriters will do anything to ensure the success of their heroes. During Robin's victory celebration, the jealous sheriff orders his men to arrest and kill him. Lady Mirian is concerned about this and promises to marry the sheriff, but only if he releases Robin. The sheriff agrees to the marriage proposal and departs the area to get ready for the nuptials. Just in case Mirian changes her mind, a hangman hangs Robin in the next scenario. Soon after, Mirian, who is elegantly attired for the occasion, and the sheriff show up along with a minister. She is joined by Prince John, her uncle. The wedding ceremony starts as Robin observes it all take place. When it comes to Mirian, she hesitates, but the sheriff readily accepts his vows. This presents an opportunity for Achu, who uses an arrow to cut Robin loose. As a result, Robin's men began engaging the guards in a fierce struggle. Amid the commotion, the sheriff grabs Mirian and drags her into his room where he attempts to make out with her. He discovers the chastity lock on her as he continues to deflower her though. The sheriff introduces a piece of drilling equipment and makes a determined attempt to pick the lock, but it is ineffective. Just then, Robin walks into the room and issues the sheriff a challenge to a duel. As the two converse back and forth, Robin's pendant breaks and a key falls out of it. The key unexpectedly finds its way onto the lock and fits perfectly, suggesting that Mirian's virginity is the most valuable acid in the realm. After a brief period of distraction, the boys quickly get back to fighting. Following a protracted fight, Robin Robin unintentionally stabs the sheriff with his sword. Latrine approaches the injured sheriff as he lies on the ground and says that she has medicine that can keep him from dying. She will give it to him, but only if he agrees to wed her. The sheriff complies out of desperation, and after being saved, he is taken away by Latrine. In the film's last scene, Robin and Mirian exchange vows in front of everyone. Suddenly, the king returns from his campaign and chastises his terrible and cruel brother. At the same moment that he commands his troops to imprison John, on. He also honors Robin for his bravery and courage. The king also visits Robin's home and abrogates all the unjust taxes levied against the populace. Robin and Miriam then share their first kiss. In the post credits sequence, Robin discovers that the lock won't open even with the key when he tries to deflower Miriam. As Robin requests a locksmith, the film comes to a close. 